So the location we chose to hunt on this 85 acre piece, uh, although not real big, was behind a pond dam. And timber ponds especially are extremely deadly coming into that rut time period, the rut itself, and even post rut. Bucks are going in behind those dams to breed, believe it or not, they'll, they'll go back in there and I've seen it several times where they will come down in those pockets and call and actually does will come to them and breed. And so that's the scenario we laid up here is we, we wanted to be in that situation because of the time of the year that we were in. So because our setup is based around a, a breeding scenario, we were actually, uh, had seen another deer, a younger deer, and I was just demonstrating with the, the gentleman who was with me filming that, um, how a breeding grunt works and how younger deer react to that. And a little, that deer wasn't a deer we were going to harvest. It was a great example to show him how he would react to a, an upper age class deer. And so I gave a breeding grunt, and all you have to do is slide the model slide all the way down, and you're gonna cup over the end, and you're gonna draw this grunt out. It's gonna be long, and it's gonna have a little bit of change in volume and pitch as it goes along. So. You just, you just got to practice it at home and it sounds just like this. Six to seven seconds at longest really is all the longer you want to make it. But that is a grunt that signifies that there is a breeding scenario going on or it's an older, more mature buck that is tailing a doe waiting patiently to breed her. And while we were making that call to this younger buck, we'd heard a grunt up above us, above the pond. Anytime I'm dealing with a buck that I've never seen before, especially on a property, or anytime I'm dealing with a mature buck that walks in extremely dense cover, although this deer was skirting around a pond dam edge, there's a lot of diversity that's happening right there in front of him, and he gets into a thick cedar patch, and although he's working his way to me, I need to make sure that he gets all the way to a seven yard or eight yard window that I have where I have a shooting lane. So I hit him with a simple contact grunt, and because he's mature, I run it all the way down, or I'm assimilating a mature buck, I run it all the way down and I just hit a quick, short, shallow grunt with low volume, just like that. And I actually point the grunt, if I can, away from me so that he goes on past my tree. And that's super important in heavy cover. If you don't hit those contact grunts, they may wander around really close within bow range and not go through your shooting lanes. As he's walking in, you can tell he's interested in the fact that a breeding grunt was laid out, which demonstrates that a doe was in heat and being bred, but he may not be a familiar deer to the area at all, or to my farm in particular. And so as he's coming in, he's being very cautious, but it's also a confirmation that what you're doing is working well because he has no fears, he's walking in very confidently, and he throws his head up a couple times, even smells a branch where possibly another deer had been. He's trying to identify what deer I may be or identify at least the age structure of the deer that he's about to confront. Something you won't hear a lot of people talk about is the thought process that should be going through your mind while a deer like this is coming in. There's a fight or flight thing that happens inside of you that you can't control. And so for me, in my shot process and the way I learn how to shoot and what I like to teach in my classes is when a buck's walking in and you're getting that opportunity that you've, you're, you're, you've been waiting all year for and you've been practicing all year for, you need to mentally go through that whole shot process in your head of what that looks like. Even project where that animal is going to walk into that lane, pulling up, aiming down, I'm, I'm centering my, my pin housing in my peep and I'm looking right where I want to hit and I'm executing and thinking about the muscle movements needed to execute a great shot. And that's, that's the thought process at that point. Once I make a decision to take an animal, I'm looking for my windows ahead of time first, I'm going through my mental process and I'm preparing for the shot. And when it occurs, I just look to where I want to hit and I just execute the shot just like I've practiced so many times before that.
doing a long breeding grunt uh, for another buck over here. And all I did was hit him with another contact grunt just to let him know I was over here in this area. He was walking out to go check a room uh, away from us, out towards around the pond. And when I hit him with one more grunt, he spun and come right down to us. Sometimes it's real subtle like that. They don't come charging in like some folks talk about. Sometimes they do, but most of the time, uh, deer socially don't interact real vocally like that. They kind of communicate subtly, and, and that's what you just saw an example of right there. Just a subtle, just a contact grunt, and he turned. He came down because he heard the breeding grunts before. He just came down to see what was going on, so he found out what was going on. Look at that pig. That pig. <laughs> what a stud. The key elements to the success of this hunt were, one, the scenario in which we were hunting in, we, I knew when to hunt that type of a scenario because I've seen it unfold so many other times in so many other situations, and now I've created the environment for that years ahead of time. The second thing that was really important was paying attention whenever you're working another deer. Even if you're learning vocalizations, you'll hear me talk a lot about how you should practice. And that demonstration, how a deer communicates to someone else, brought in another deer. So you've got to constantly be aware of your entire surroundings. And three, focusing at the, at, on a shot process that makes sense for you when a whitetail walks in or the giant bull walks in or whatever it is, keeping your composure together but looking forward to the excitement levels that you reach during that moment of truth is what leads to success and all three of those combined are what put my tag on this deer. Want to experience the same results you just witnessed? Use what the Deer Society experts use. The Extinguisher Deer Call and Black Rack Rattling System are the highest rated deer communication systems of all time. And less than 1% of deer hunters will have the opportunity to buy one this season. Get yours today at thedeersociety.com. Order now.